Wednesday. Hello. Happy Wednesday. Greetings from our home. Yes, it's Tap Talk Home Edition, Volume 2. I don't know that it's always going to be Home Edition, but it has been a couple, uh, it's been lately, which means puppies. As soon as we cheer and say Happy Wednesday, yes. she feels like she needs to be involved in the conversation. Because she's part of the Tap Talk. Yes. So, <laughs> happy Wednesday. <laughs> All the other ones coming too. Yep. But she's uncertain. It's been okay. Grateful for the weather because it's like fifty or sixty degrees out, which is like, like super cool. Also, it's so dark. It's so dark. Yeah. So it's like two o'clock, and I'm like, "Are we done with working? <laughs> is it time for couch time?" And it's not. I mean, it could be. It could be, but it is not. So I feel like it feels like you're like at the shop and it's like midnight. Yeah. But actually it's... I feel like productivity around town is at a low point right now. Um, I am that. Yes. I am. It is. Today especially was like being in a wet mitten. And it looks like we're going to be in that mitten for a little while. And that's going to get cold. So uh, at least it's like freakishly 60 degrees at 8 p.m. and apparently going to be like that overnight which is bizarre so speaking of cold um it was very brisk for the 5k yeah but the rain held out and we had a great turnout we had like 40 walkers slash runners all there for different reasons those who just wanted to get out and support the cause those that have been directly impacted so it was super special but it was chilly, but so grateful that it did not downpour. Mm -hmm. um, and not during the race. It did later in the day. It did later in the day, but, but not, not during, during the run. Later. So that was really special. Um, and then speaking of cold, again, uh, we have our next event coming up on Saturday. <laughs> yes. And uh, like last year, though, last year was also brisk. We're doing our luminary walk, which is a quarter mile loop behind the punk in the wetland. And... Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> and it's supposed to be chilly. Yeah. Like we'll see once we get a little closer, cause we don't want to make any predictions, but you're probably going to want to wear a jacket. Wear a jacket. And then also speaking of chili, we will have chili that That's night, true. which is a great chilly. segue into actually what we're all doing on Saturday. Yes. Let's, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, oh, let's do a little clinky clinky. This is tap talk after all. Cheers. What uh, Ashley and I are sipping on is a little a little precursor for this weekend's tasting. Um, we've got a couple of those tonight. So uh, on Saturday, we will be having the Luminary Walk, but we will also be hosting a Bent Paddle beer tasting, uh, which will kind of surround that event. The beer tasting will start at 5 o'clock from 5 to 7. We'll have um, our friend Eric who is the sales rep for Bent Paddle, who's been down several times over the years to the punk. And he's going to be come, coming down to sling some delicious Bent Paddle beers, including one of this. One of this? Mm. this, this mm. Is, that's a live. That's a live one. One of this. Sometimes you say weird, dumb things. It's one of these. One or of what these. this is. This is yes. <laughs> Venture Pills. This is one of the flagship beers from Bent Paddle. It is a crisp German-inspired lager, but with a little American twist, so it's a little bit hoppier than your standard pills. So it's still light and refreshing, but it's got a little zip. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I could drink it all the time. I would have to say, having no big deal, but I've known Bent Paddle since before they even started. And when they first brought their stuff down uh, to the Twin Cities market, the Venture Pills was probably my favorite beer that they made. And of, like, all that time, it's probably still my favorite beer that they make. Um, it is uh, just a super well-made lager, and I think the more and more that you drink beer over time, you start to appreciate the really kind of well-made traditional beers that you could drink several of and just really appreciate the taste, and it's not. What do we say? It's like a cheese pizza. Like, you go to a place, and if they have, like, a really yeah. good cheese pizza, it's like the classic traditional, and you're like, okay... They're not hiding behind anything. They're not hiding right. behind macaroni and cheese on it. They're not. It's yeah. it's just really good cheese pizza. I feel like that's what the style of beer is like. It's like they're crushing the classics. They don't need to throw anything fancy on it, and it's just amazing on its own. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is a yummy. I yummy want yummy. cheese pizza. Well, tomorrow. We had cheese pizza last night. 
We cook other things besides cheese pizza. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's Five just nights a week, pizza. cheese pizza. Uh, yikes. Um, okay, so Ashley, tell us more about the Luminary Walk. Oh, okay. So five o'clock begins the bent paddle beer tasting. Mm-hmm. So you get to have a couple tastes before you get ready to go on the Luminary Walk, which starts at six. Uh, it will be plenty dark at six. Again, wear your jacket. It's depressing. Uh, wear your jacket. Uh, to stay warm, but it's a quarter mile loop through the wetland. We did this last year. Uh, it's a shining light on lung cancer awareness. So uh, it's a very easy walk and um, it's going to be very beautiful. It was really beautiful last year. So uh, once you get done with that quarter mile loop, you come on in and you warm yourself back up. The tasting goes until seven. Uh, we also have our Nosh Pit Saturday. Um, so starting at noon, we'll be serving chili, and we're going to be making a big batch so we can serve it throughout the whole day. We hope. If everyone's hungry at noon, I'm not making more chili. Once it's gone, it's gone. Well, we, okay. We'll talk about this Just offline. saying, if you really want chili, you better get there early. I know, but it would be nice to have chili, like, when it's cold out and people are walking. We'll discuss this offline, but I feel strongly <laughs> that we will have chili. I'll do my best. We'll have chili. I'll try. And, we'll see what happens. And, um... <laughs> We're also going to, what are we doing? Luminary, The Luminary chili, Walk. You can pack. bring your, you can have your beer, bring it along. Oh, um, up to yes. the walk, we have luminary bags at the punk, mm-hmm. uh, where we're just asking that you write words of encouragement or if you want to do something in honor or a memory of someone, and we'll make sure that's placed out on um, the Luminary Walk path. So feel yeah. free at any time to come in. Yeah, we have stations set up and we've got a couple made up just so you can kind of see. And um, we are asking, like, part of it is we're trying to raise money for longevity. So um, if you make one, maybe throw uh, throw some money the way towards longevity. Um, we also, if you're maybe not feeling the luminary so much, and we have a tree um, uh, in there. Everyone thinks it's a Christmas tree. It's not necessarily. It not yet. Theoretically, it's a Christmas tree. But right now, it's a longevity tree. Yes. Um, and you can make up an ornament and put it on there in, uh, again, in honor or memory of someone or just a positive message um, in support of anyone who uh, may be going through or has gone through uh, lung cancer. Um, Good idea. <laughs> You're so smart. Um, okay, so. <laughs> yes. What? Just read the comments. Oh, I was if reading you're the comments. Yes. The so smartness. Um, so I guess before Xylus, you can help. You can come help make the chili. So for our next one, we should have a beer, and then we should talk about Beth's Appreciation Week. What so do you think you're about saying that? We have a beer. Yeah, have the next one. We're having a beer. The next one. I'll have a beer. You want to have a beer? <sighs> Cheers. By the way, does anyone remember these glasses we used to have? I do. This is such an old one. It has no writing on it. It's just, this was a pre- Wasn't that just like a sample? Like a, no. literally like a sample glass? Oh wait, no, I'm lying. It does have our logo on it. Look at it, it does. This was a sample actually. And look at this one. No, oh, it's the Frankenmuth. With the wiener on it. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is another bent panel beer that we also have on right now. We had to put a couple of them on ahead of the tasting. And this one also falls into a similar categories as the other one in that it's just a super crushable, drinkable beer that is no frills, but is just really well done. And um, this is the 14 degree. I think it's now just branded as 14 degree amber ale, but it was at one point called 14 degree ESB. Um, and ESB is one of those fun beer acronyms like IPA that stands for something. is isn't just three letters thrown together. It's not ESBA. It's not ESBA. Extra Special Bitter. Um, <laughs> without going too deep into I feel like British you could use that styles. like in a relationship. Like you're being ESB right now. <laughs> what does that mean? Extra Special Bitter. Like you're mm. being like extra bitter right now. Extra bitter. I'm going to start using that. It's not a super bitter beer. This beer clocks in at five and a half percent or so. Um, it's really, it's got a balance of nice kind of like toasted malts, some fresh kind of fragrant hops in there, but it's like, it's not too much either way. It's a mm-hmm. good beer that almost anyone would like as long as you like beer. Um, extra special bitter, it stands for different kinds of bitter that were made in England. Um, not necessarily super bitter beers, but just a reference to kind of like the hop profile. And um, Do you want more room so you can be in? I'm good. Okay. Nobody wants to see that much of me. They'd rather see you and the Phoebes. And the Phoebes. Um, 
and there were different categories. There was ordinary bitter, which would have been very low alcohol, maybe 3% or so. And then there was a special bitter, a little bit higher. And then ESB, extra special bitter, which would be a stronger, richer, full flavored beer. Even though it's not, you know, by our standards today, we would think that is like eight or 10% alcohol. This might have been more like five and a half to 6% to be a real strong, rich beer. Um, so it's kind of a nod to English heritage in beer. And not a lot of breweries make this style that much anymore, but this is one of the mainstays from Bent Paddle. And it's been there ever since the beginning. So um, just a really nice one. So two very good, just kind of drinkable, crushable beers. Yeah, like very crazy. approachable if you're like dipping your toe, I feel like, and to being like, what's a beer that I could try yeah. and not feel offended? This is a, these are both very approachable beers. Right. Um, and since we don't have any more, uh, bent panel beers right now as part of the tasting um, I'll reference the other two just so you kind of have them because these are like well the ones like super special yeah so one is a seasonal it's called their snowmaker pale ale which might be a little bit sensitive subject after the next couple of days because it sounds like there may be a little bit of white stuff especially for their north up by Duluth um, but it is a seasonal pale ale. It is rich and sticky hoppy. It's more of like a punch. It's closer. It's sort of a pale ale IPA kind of thing, um, but very nice if you like to get your little hop smack. And then the real special one that we'll be featuring during the tasting is I'm calling it, they don't call it this. I'm calling it. <laughs> okay. I'm, I made up my own name for their beer. I'm calling it the triple double. Oh. Because it's, they make a beer called the black ale. It's very good. And then they make a cold press black ale, which has coffee and and is a black ale. Phoebes doesn't like that one. But then every year they've made a double shot, double black, which is a really strong version of the black ale with coffee that's aged in bourbon barrels. And then this year, <laughs> she's such a and good then, listener. Uh, they made a double barrel double shot, double black. So that's the triple double because it's aged in barrels. And then they pull it out of the barrels, and they put it in new barrels. She loves this story. And we're going to have that for you, Phoebes. We're going to have that beer at the tasting. Um, so those four beers, the double barrel, double shot, double black. Wow. The Snowmaker Pale Ale, the Venture Pills, and the 14 Degree ESB. Yes. That'll all be there on Saturday, and all be delicious. And you'll have an opportunity to try them all. Um, who's going to be there? Eric. Eric, that's right. Yeah, you said that. Yes. Okay. Um, so that will be going out on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. So that's a beer. We were talking about beer, but then we, I want to talk about the Vets Appreciation Week. Yes. Veterans Day is on. Tomorrow. Friday. Isn't that tomorrow? No, it's Friday. Don't listen to me. Veterans Day is Friday. No, it's, it's your dad's th birthday tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Veterans Day is Friday and, um, we do Appreciation Week where if you are a veteran, uh, please come in and we'd love to uh, give you a drink. You should have a drink on us, coffee or beer. So uh, please come in. We have some veterans in the family, Ian's dad, um, Matt, and my brother-in-law. And then we have a close family friend who passed away who uh, is near and dear to us who's a veteran. And then Ethan, who works with us, also a veteran. So uh, very near and dear to us. Please come in. Uh, we would like to say thank you and uh, give you a drink. So that's Vets Appreciation Week. That goes Wednesday, which is today. It's true. Through Sunday. Yeah. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it's, it is. That's fair. I feel like it's midnight. I yes. don't know. But, um, yeah. It's been a very strange November because I looked, and last week on Wednesday, Sorry. it was 75 degrees. Um, so, I mean, t I guess this week, not that much different. It's 60 degrees, which is also weird. So, I don't know. Who knows? It's all weird. Um, okay, our final beer to cap off our tap talk for the evening is this murky beverage here, which I bet Central Waters would love to hear this. Actually, Anello would probably be down with that and be describing his beer as a murky beverage. Mm. I don't know why, but this just, it tastes better right now. Maybe it's because I'm home, but like in the absence of additional stimuli at the bar, it is super, I'm going to like, all right, do you have a smell? There's something in there. I'm not good at this game. Mm. It's not a game; it's a skill. But <laughs> we're getting all we're getting all up in the business here. I'm not very good at it. Even I just with, try to like even with food. I'm not very good at. It's okay. There's no right out. or wrong answer. Well, 
I encourage people just to try this with beer every now and again to like just try and pick out something recognizable to you. It doesn't it, there's no right or wrong. It, smells, it could be it just, whatever. It smells very happy to but, me. But give try and like pick out some kind of recognizable thing that might be that you would if you had to tell someone else what it tasted like. It's a good tasting exercise. Um, wow, I'm gonna call it like it? I'm gonna call it. I don't know. It's See? like peaches and gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought, okay. Well, I didn't know we were playing in a game like that. I don't, it's, it's whatever. It's just so, it's got a, it's got a good stank to it. Like it just smells good. So anyway, this is called Little Dots. It's a double dry hopped hazy IPA from Central Waters out of Amherst, Wisconsin, which is, I will say it every time I talk about them, that they are one of the best breweries in the state of Wisconsin. And I would say that one of the best being like, top five probably um and they just kill it they do a great job across the board they make an interesting representation of styles <laughs> and they're always up on whatever the current hotness is but they also just do some classic kick ass kick ass stuff and uh this one is just no exception to that so um i don't know there's like it's just got what is it what hops are in there do you know i should be able to tell you That's that. Okay. You I don't know. They might me. not even list it. Okay. Um, but look it up. See yeah. if they, see if they give us. It's got to be some of the new hot things. Okay. If I'm gonna guess one, you yeah. Can guess. My... I'm looking. I'm gonna say. I don't know if this is good television, but. I'm gonna say that there's some mosaic, and I'm gonna say there's like some Idaho Seven. This is loading. Okay. That's, those are a couple of my guesses. So. Maybe Vic's Secret. I don't think that's in there. So this says Zappa. Oh, yeah. It's a fun hop. I even read about this. I'm just, just. Originally found growing wild out in the deserts of New Mexico and is a fun and unique flavor profile. Extra strength zebra stripe gum with a little fruit cocktail thing going on. Zebra stripe gum. I almost said gum. And then it says... That's what it is, son of a bitch. Hi, Jen. <laughs> um, these, okay, if you... Going on untapped is really fun to read people's tasting notes. It's, like, fun and it's also not fun. But, like... Did they say anything about gasoline it's, in Well, there? no, it says, um, jazz isn't dead, it just smells funny. There you go. That's what they gave for a tasting note. So I'd like to comment on... I'd like to piggyback on um, the Zappa hops. Zappa and, or Zappa, like I think it's named after Frank Zappa. Um, Sabro hops, which we talked about last week, are from a variety of hops that have been growing native in the landscape of New Mexico for an undetermined period of time. I say that because I don't know the answer. Somebody does, but they are a, a native hop variety to North America. Whereas like basically all hops that are used in nearly all other brewing styles are um, hops that have been imported uh, primarily from Europe. Um, so Sabro, Zappa, and I know there's a bunch of other varieties that have been bred out of these um, wild um, New Mexico hops. And they all have a similar, there's like a, they have this. It's not medicinal. I don't know. It's, it's like. It's a, it's a heaviness they have like this we talked about this last year or last <laughs> there's week, something remember? about them there's something about them uh that just has this extra layer of pungent kind of quality about it that's really cool so they're uniquely north american hops um so that's kind of that's kind of cool and i think this is a good beer but just kind of as a since we're both here this is not a beer that i would typically go for like i'd be happy to taste it but it's not a beer that i would typically have a whole glass of um so, I don't yeah. know, point, counterpoint, I guess. I think it's well done. I think it's a well done beer, but would not be something that I would drink on my own. Um, yeah, what's the point? Um, and uh, just because maybe if I were watching at home, I'd be like annoyed by seeing the underbrim of my hat and be like, there's dots on it. What is it? Well, this is an Oregon hat when we were out visiting and it came from, pardon my hair, the Pelican Brew Pub, and it's got pelicans on it. How much fun is that? So fun. It's like become one of my new favorite hats. 
And mostly because, good Lord, look at my hair. It looked like I could be the shoe bomber. Oh my gosh, when we went voting yesterday. So it took an hour to vote, which was really cool to actually see. Um, just to see. In ac action. Yeah, so that was really cool. But we came back and so like we were like out, we stood outside for like 45 minutes waiting to vote and it was like raining and whatever. So then Ian and I wanted to take like a voted sticker. And so um, Ian was like trying to fix his hair before our picture and it was very funny and it was there was just no coming back from it not that i should really be talking about hair right now but um it's just an anecdotal piece i suppose we're going astray here that's okay to be fair we we don't we uh, are astray. we don't you know what you're getting into if you're watching this all right Come join us this weekend. Yes, please. Bundle up on Saturday, but come down. It'll be fun, I promise. It's going to be beautiful. Ashley did. Uh, this is this is your brainchild, um, the Luminary, and I think it's a beautiful tribute, and it's also just a really neat little experience. It's not a major commitment. You don't have to be like, oh, I can't walk that distance. Literally anyone could do it. It's what, like a quarter to a third of a mile? It's, it's 0 0.25 miles. Yeah, so it'll take you, if you do it at a very leisurely pace, like 15 minutes. Um, and it's just neat and inspiring. Even if you don't know someone personally who is affected by lung cancer, I think it's a positive, um, and enjoyable way you can come. Even if you're just there for the beer, come out and join us for the walk because it's, it's very just pretty nice, and very yeah. serene and mm -hmm. like you're out in nature and it's just very calm. Yep. And, um, I mean, just how often do you get to walk in the woods with just a lighted path? It's beautiful. Right. So come join us, please. And I think we said this last weekend, there's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. So keep just applying that to the rest of the six months that are ahead. Yes. So, well, yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks. And I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. So here's our little... It's not midnight, just to clarify, she, folks. She doesn't like the beer. She doesn't like beer. No, we try. She likes the face. Mm-hmm. Well, we're, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We're going to make dinner now. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Well, have a good night and we will see you this weekend and we'll touch base next week. All right. Cheers. Cheers.